I guess a much better shot. First time to see it. The Big Ben, famous. We're on the River Thames. Must get on the coast, I don't miss it. This is the ship we ate on. old steamers that's an old paddle steamer uh, which is now tied up here and uh, is used now as you can see as a floating pub a few people on there having a drink in fact I'm told it's one of the few places in London where you can still get drunk on water <laughs> <laughs> now one or two people are awake uh, over the road here before the railway was built here uh, there was a factory uh, back in 1824 uh, a young boy came to Bones Blacking Factory. The young boy was called Charles Dickens. That's where Charles Dickens worked as a young man. Across the river there, we've got the Royal Festival Hall. You can see the building there with the Royal Festival Hall. That was built for the Great uh, Festival of Britain in 1951, uh, which uh, took place over there. And that is now a large concert hall. And adjoining it, there are two smaller concert halls called the Queen Elizabeth Hall and the Purcell Room. And next to that, we have the National Film Theatre. And we also have a, a new museum over there called the Museum of the Moving Image. It's one of these so-called interactive museums where you uh, can uh, twiddle all the knobs and uh, fiddle with everything. They even make a film. If you go on there, uh, you can take part in filmmaking. They, you can actually star in a film, and at the end, they, they, they run it back. And uh, So if you want to be a film star, you can go and have a look. Over there also, the building with the uh, sign flashing away, that building uh, houses three theatres. It's called the National Theatre, but in fact it houses three theatres under one roof. They're called the National National Theatre collectively. The three theatres are called the Olivier, uh, the Cottesloe, and the... Of another great, great Victorian uh, Prime Minister called Disraeli. These two gentlemen were actually opponents. They were always arguing with one another. And one day, when they were in Parliament, commander of Bomber Command, they're the one on the far side. The church is now the church of the Royal Air Force, the Memorial Church of the Royal Air Force. The one on the other side, Air Chief Marshal Lord Dowdy, who led the pilots in the Battle of Britain. Just behind the church on the right, little statue of Dr. Johnson. Do you remember Dr. Johnson we mentioned in Poets' Corner? The one who compiled our first English dictionary. Statue on every corner. He was the man who said, when a man Me? is tired of London, he must be tired of us. It's not criminal courts, the criminal two cities. As we pass this point, we are now leaving the city of London, sorry, leaving the city of Westminster, the city of Westminster, and we are now in the city of London. Now, there are very few places that I know of where you can get from one city to another as quickly as that. There we are, we've just gone from one city to another. We're coming along a street here called Fleet Street. Now, if you look to your left here, you'll see a little church. Perhaps those on the right-hand side can tell me if it looks or reminds you of a wedding cake. Just coming up on our right-hand side any minute now. <clears throat> there it is. Does that uh, spire remind you of a wedding cake? Can you see it? You see, it should do, because this is where the idea originated from. Because this is Fleet Street. And at one time, a gentleman lived here called William Rich. He was a baker. And when he got married in that church back in the 18th century, up until that time, of course, there had been nothing uh, particular about wedding cakes. They just had a cake like anyone else. But he decided to bake an unusual wedding cake. So what he did, he copied the church spire. That is, he put little cakes, one on top of the other, with little columns in between. And everyone thought, what a great idea. And they copied it ever since. So that's where the idea is. And jugglers, it's not that sort of circus. We simply mean a traffic junction, traffic circle. That's what we mean by a circus. And we're climbing up Ludgate Hill. Halfway up the hill on the left, we're going to pass a little front, by the way. The statue there, that is Queen Anne. Do you remember we talked about Queen Anne this morning? Rather unfortunate lady. Do you remember I said she was pregnant 17 times? She was queen. When they consecrated the church, she was queen at that time. So Mr. Abbey, the yeoman of the guard, had to carry her in a chair to get to the coronation chair. See, she couldn't walk up the aisle. 
and she was also an alcoholic, uh, which is not surprising if you think about it. She had 17 children and she was huge, so I think anyone would be out. Sixteen feet below you, you'll come to the Roman level. So that's where the Romans used to worship the god called Mithras. Now we're almost in the heart of the city. Behind the scaffolding is that's the Bankers Bank. Behind those. Now look here to your left. We go slowly by here. If you look to your left, in a moment you'll see a column. And this column, which was built by Sir Christopher Wren, commemorates 111 steps. I went up when I was... Now old. we are crossing over London Bridge. The bridge is falling down. This is our new London Bridge that we're falling on now. Um, this bridge that we're standing on now has been here uh, since 1973. Prior to that, in years, they had various bridges. Uh, the first one was built here by the Romans nearly 2,000 years ago. Uh, they were the first if you're interested in, uh, in that sort of thing. Okay. The Royal Naval Museum. And... Uh, it was last used in action. It was the, the guns were last fired in anger. Uh, was during the Korean War. Just on the right here, you see this building to your right with the two towers or turrets. That's another railway station called Cannon Street Station. Now, like a lot of our uh, railway stations, that used to have a big glass roof on top, a great uh, a glass dome and roof. And so they took the roof down and they stored it in a warehouse. And um, in fact, the railway station was never touched uh, throughout the war. Here on the right, uh, this is a, an attraction here called the London Dungeon. It's in the arches underneath the railway station there. There used to be wine above the door, what it's about. Now we're going to cross the river again. We're going over Tower Bridge. Remember Tower? This is called St. Olaf's, or was St. Olaf's School. It's closed now. But there, the school, not that building, the previous the river, so an odd style. So that was the uh, opening ceremony, which uh, was the only occasion that it failed to open. If you look to your right, uh, now, down the river, you will see a tall building, an office building there, with a pyramid on the top and a little light flashing away. That building, which stands in the area called Canary Wharf, and that building is now the tallest building in Britain. Uh, it's just over 800 feet tall, it has 52 floors, and the view from the top is absolutely stunning. Unfortunately, it's not open to the public, so you can't just turn up and go up there, but I was fortunate enough to be taken up there a few weeks ago. Uh, unfortunately, the company building it has now gone into liquidation. Uh, a company called Olympia and York, uh, you may have read about it in the newspapers. Uh, they've only let half of the building and uh, say the company is now in liquidation. For some reason, everyone calls it, uh, in there of course, one of the things we will see are the crown jewels, because this is where we now keep crown jewels, the house in the Tower of London. Now, we're going to uh, stop just around the, the corner here. Um, I make a time, I make it... Uh, just gone 25 minutes to 3, 
20 miles. We will reach the first group. must be nice to uh, be able to come back and cheat. Yeah, yeah it's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> so what's your word about uh, England? That you have I'm, I'm camera, camera shy. Oh, I really? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll stop. I hate it. I really do. I can't remember. <laughs> Between each was a, a drawbridge, so you had three draw towers and three drawbridges, and that entrance was known as the land gate. Here we have another entrance. Now you must imagine for a moment that the, where we're standing was not here originally, so the River Thames lapped up against this tower. So this was another entrance. Originally, you could have come by boat down the river here and sailed in through that entrance. And this entrance was originally known simply as the Water Gate. As you see, Ooh. we also have water gates in England. <laughs> um, Americans are laughing. But this was the way in which they brought the prisoners to the tower. Now, when I say prisoners, it was only the important prisoners who were ever brought here. We had lots of prisons in London uh, for the ordinary criminals. This is where we imprisoned our important people, our state prisoners. In fact, uh, it was used right up until the Second World War. Even Rudolf Hess was imprisoned in the Tower of London for some time. Um, now, they would not be tried here, they would have their trial at Westminster, uh, where we now, we now call it the Houses of Parliament are. Then following their trial, assuming of course they were found guilty, they would be put in a boat and then rowed down the River Thames here. That gate there would open, they would row in through that gate and then the goats would close behind them. conquered us in 1066. Remember he came here with this relatively small army of about 20,000 men. So for his own protection he built castles, a whole series of castles up and down the country. He also built a castle here in London. He started off by building a very simple wooden tower here, but then he realised he needed something a little more secure. So in the year 1078 he got a monk by the name of Gandalf. And most people were executed up there on Tower Hill. This spot was reserved for the very important people, and those who lost their heads here were extremely privileged, because here they had their head cut off in private. Now, as you can see, there's a list of names there. There are only seven names on that list that say they are extremely important people, three of whom were queens of England. Now, I'm just going to very briefly mention one or two. I won't go through every one. I'm sure you don't want me to do that, but I'll mention one or two for you. First of all, just mention the last one on the list because it's not really an execution at all. It's described as a beheading. Because uh, you remember I was saying that Richard, Duke of Gloucester, who had these two young boys smothered, in their uh, beds with pillows. Um, Richard, who decided to become king himself, he uh, made his
drag this poor man out of the White Tower across here. Yeah, she was single and also. She got very like probably getting Lord Lovett, he died here in 1747. And on the day he died, so many people came to watch that they built wooden grandstands all around here. And as he was led up here to have his head chopped off, uh, the, one of the grandstands collapsed. And 12 people were crushed to death under the grandstand. In fact, the, they say the last thing that Lord Lovett did was laugh his head off. Um, just <laughs> At the back, there's a building at the back, uh, which you can see, uh, we're going to turn left here, just ahead at the moment. Uh, that building, with a sort of statue on the top, used to be uh, the offices of an organisation called the Port of London or Timber. And as they went up, each floor used to overhang uh, the floor below. So when you reach the top level, they say you could literally lean across the street. Now, uh, we're heading back through the City of London, ladies and gentlemen. Um, a little later on, uh, we shall uh, begin is for those who have got on at the Travellers Check-In, which is near Russell Square. Now, that is also the point, if any of you got on at the Russell... Okay, uh, we have somebody, I noticed, who got on at the... the near to the Royal Albert Hall, you have to go. It's National. Park International Hotel. Legislative Bureau of the Capitol Building. We stole the idea from them. Followed on from there, we've got Victoria. Anyone got on at Victoria? Right, oh, quite a lot of you. Uh, and then finally, Trafalgar Square. Trafalgar Square, which is uh, where... Uh, so, I'm afraid if you're one of the last off, well, Unfortunately, that's the way it goes. Some shut, but uh, is it, it the person that was hung there? Uh, this was in 1867, so just over 100 years ago, uh, that we uh, stopped hanging people in public. Uh, it's called the River Fleet. The River Fleet it flows down underneath the uh, the red brick building coming up on the right-hand side is the uh, offices of one of our large insurance companies. It's called the Prudential insurance company that is their offices and on the left hand side we're going to turn right just up here in a moment but on the left hand side why don't we quite reach this end of the city we're almost at the three days the great in the newspaper this afternoon and he will get his share eventually uh, anyway uh, we leave that entirely in your hands but thank you very much for coming with us now anyone who got on at the uh, travelers check-in Russell Square please Whenever you might have hidden your belongings make sure you have everything Right, anyone from the Russell Hotel or the Imperial Hotel or the Travellers Check-In, those staying around Bloomsbury, this is where you must leave us. Thank you once again. Um, incidentally, ladies and gentlemen, if any of you um, uh, haven't... Uh, uh, it also includes a, a visit to a haunted house. Uh, it's, it's a bit of fun. In fact, uh, the guy who's doing it tonight is a friend of mine, so... Uh...
is my friend Sven. Yep. Sven lives in Liverpool. And we're on the train to Liverpool right now. Uh, Sven, tell me a little bit about Liverpool and about yourself and about your job in London by Tapelga Square. Oh, that's well, as you know, my job. You know what? <clears throat> Security officer. Oh, that's a pretty good job. Does it pay you well? Pretty good, yeah. Alright. Been on there, say, 17 months. You've been drinking these uh, McEwen's here? He's on, a, he's on his third one. <coughs> oh, McEwen's from second. Scotland. This comes from Scotland beer. On the second one, we got our Walkmans and we're hanging down. Uh, tell me a little bit about your uh, city of Liverpool. That's, no, well, to me, it's the best city around. Best city in England. I agree. Friends up there, people up there are friendly. What yeah. are the best places to go and party? Best places to go to party uh, in town, it's Hippodrome. It's, uh, From this hotel, the St. George's. I'm gonna be meeting up with Jane any minute. I'm gonna go down there on the street in a minute. The reason why the parade was going on, and I missed it, is because, here's my room, the Queen's birthday is today. Today is um, the 12th, no, the 13th. Today's the 13th, and it's the Queen's birthday. And this is what my room looks like there, having that parade for her. Right now, I gotta go down to the store and buy myself a couple videotapes and some pens. So, uh, tell you. Ciao. This is what's going on in Buckingham Palace. Trooping of the color, they call this, for her birthday. I'm cutting on and seeing this. Brother of the director of the music of the Palace, 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 Palace,
check the standard. Yeah, I looked out and picked up the my trumpeter on the gray. tapes. And the bearer, squadron called Major Jim Hicks. You knew, and I'm waiting for Jane to get here. Six foot four inches. He doesn't get here by one. Emily's going to be here. I'll leave a message for Jane with whom I'm in. He was the corporal of horse on the Queen's lifeguard that was bombed in Hyde Park ten years ago this July. Queen. I was there yesterday the for changing three the guard. Four found by the lifeguards. Regiment that dates back to a group of loyal gentlemen who accompanied Charles II in exile from 1652 to 1659. They wear scarlet tunics and white plumes on the Albert's helmet. A helmet that was introduced in 1842 to replace a bearskin crested helmet. It was supposed to have been approved by Prince Albert. Bringing up the rear, the farriers with their ceremonial axes, both in blue tunics. Now the mounted bands play a short burst of the old royal slow march. Or the trumpeter plays the trump chord. So with proceedings on horse guards nearly complete, the massed mounted bands move off down the approach road, ready to lead the whole procession back to Buckingham Palace. As they're doing this, the Queen Mother's party will be moving out of horse guards building, ready to drive down the Mall ahead of this procession. Meanwhile, the field officer gives orders for the foot guards to form 16 divisions, 36 men in three ranks of 12 in each division. Ready up to march back. This is cool. having driven round along Whitehall and down through Admiralty Arch, driving back down the Mall with the Princess of Wales and Prince Harry. Pretty cool, Miss Diana. Pretty Diana. Now, with the royal approval given, the field officer trots back to the other end of the central carriageway. From there, he waits the signal that the Queen Mother's carriage is clear of the approach road on its way back down the Mall. Meanwhile, head coachman Stephen Matthews reappears with the ivory-mounted Phaeton. Stephen Matthews has been with the Royal Muse since the age of 15. In 1981, he was appointed Rough Rider, responsible for breaking and training all the new horses. The garrison sergeant major, six foot six of tempered steel, sergeant major 
Terry Mason gives the signal to the field officer that all is clear for the march off. I'll do. I'll pull in because I've lost some time. I'll pull into the street round the corner, and then we can uh, see it when we move forward. The red brick building is the Royal Court Theatre, uh, where we had Paul in '79 and Julian in '89. Mm. Um, over to the far left. I mean, you can wander around here when you're uh, back at the hotel. The rounded building is with the dome on the top is the reference library, and that's where Paul received the freedom of the city in 1984. He's, it's been offered to the four of them. But Paul is the only one so far who's come back publicly to receive it and to receive it at the left and smart room. At St George's Hall, near left, where the Coca-Cola ad got for with all the multiracial children's singing was filmed in. In this building just ahead left here. Okay. And that's where in 1959 Alan Williams, the Beatles' first manager, held an arts ball. And he got John and Stuart Sutcliffe to decorate the place for him. Uh, when John died, everybody met in front of St George's Hall on the plateau, which we'll pass in a moment. Quite a, quite a nice area with statues of Queen Victoria and St Albert. Opposite the front of St George's Hall is our largest theatre, the Liverpool Empire, uh, which is where the Beatles played when they were famous because they had to take the largest theatre. It seats 2,400. Uh, they last played there the 5th of December, 65, and I was lucky enough to be there. Hey, lucky lady. So, you, didn't, you didn't see them in that, to those days? Yeah. Where did you see in them then? In Atlanta. Yes. Oh, so you've really followed them right through. I was about five when they were doing all that. I'm only 31. <laughs> but I still age, love them. Age has got quite a few advantages. Someone yeah. else in this car is going to be 50 this year, so. Yes, they are. But not me. Congratulations, <laughs> Happy Joe. birthday, John. Which, Jim, which, which Jim, 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 sorry, beg your pardon, which month? We can understand why you picked John. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, which, which month, Jim? October. October. Uh, October 18th. 18th, yes. double nine. Jim, we have a hard time understanding <laughs> the British accent occasionally. Yeah. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and you are a Beatle fan, Jim. Oh, yes. You he would never live with me if he wasn't. He'd be married to the wrong woman. <laughs> We run around the world chasing Paul McCartney. Jim is very patient. <laughs> the only difference between us chasing Paul McCartney and others is we catch him. <laughs> you really do. I'm so I'm amazed. That's the whole reason why I'm in England, Jane, is because of you. I owe it to you. 
Now, ahead of us is Lime Street Station. Imagine Brian Epstein going off from there so many times to try and find a record company to sign on the Beatles. One by one, they turned the Beatles down until on what was going to be his final attempt, he went to EMI parlor phone where fortunately he met George Martin, who gave the Beatles a trial, signed them up, recorded them, music went worldwide. There's the empire to the far left now. But the Beatles used to wait for Brian Epstein coming back from his journey. Journeys were four and a half hours each way in those days. I mean, you came up in what, two hours 20 last night, Eric? Uh, and yep. they, they used to wait in a little restaurant, a uh, little cafe, which was on the corner, um, oh, Punch and Judy. Uh, under the Tower Block building, it was on the corner there. There's a little cafe there now, but it was uh, a much um, rougher type building in those days. But uh, Lime Street is actually one of the oldest working passenger stations in the world. My daughter's just going off from there now. Back to South Wales, 10 past 1. Did you watch any of the changing of the colour today? No. no, no I, was, uh, I was in London yesterday and they're all gearing, they're gearing up for it. I watched the changing of the guard. Yes. But this mm. is more exciting over here in Liverpool. Of course, you're in Liverpool now, the best city. So yeah, the Punch and Judy was just on the corner on the left there where the cop was. Now I'm just going to go around the block here so you can see uh, the former blacklist which is where Paul McCartney uh, worked, where George Harrison worked as a uh, trainee electrician. Paul worked... Uh, sorry, George, George the electrician. Paul, Paul worked at Lewis's. Sorry, I got my words muddled up there. Paul worked at Lewis's store as a second van driver. Lewis's is just ahead here. And uh, I'm sure you've seen our statue exceedingly bare, have you? High up on the right-hand side. Uh, John used to have Cynthia waiting for him on the corner underneath that statue. The statue is known locally as Dickie Lewis. That's in that book too that, that I got from mm -hmm. you. It mentions that. Yes. I already read half of it on the uh, tour bus. I can't keep my nose out of that Beatles stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Heavens knows why. So how many conventions do you all go to then? I've never been to one. Have you? Yeah. But I've got two butcher covers, mm. about 80 Beatles CDs related. Mm. The Britannia Adelphi on the left is where the Beatles stayed when they were famous and where we hold our Beatle convention each year in August, uh, the last Sunday and Monday in August. So you're going down the cavern tonight, are you? Possibly. Mm. It's up to them. The yes, but uh, the replacement's very like, you know, the original or the the part that looks like the cavern is very like it was. It's bigger now. There'll be music on there tonight. Uh, some, some nights, uh, Roag Best is in there, Pete's brother. Uh, he's arranging groups in there. I know he was there on Thursday night. I took some people out oh. yesterday who were talking to him on Thursday night. On the right here, uh, the former Blackfoot store took over all this block, which is where George Harrison worked. 